It's your open source advocate and I'm back and today I wanted to talk about the ghost blog. This is one that I've talked about doing for a long time and I've just put it off and put it off and I don't really know why but I really wanted to go through how to set this up through Portainer with you. Um, I found that there was a little bit of a, a, a hurdle when I when I tried to set it up for my own uh, site which is if you guys have been going there you'll know it and it's shownotes.opensourceisawesome.com um, and, and the hard thing I found was once I got it installed even if I set up my reverse proxy and everything like that, it kept trying to route me to the local host address, and I couldn't figure out why. And, and finally, once I did and, and I figured out what I needed to change, it made everything work like it should. So I just wanted to go through, one, how to set it up with Portainer, two, how to set up your reverse proxy, and three, what, what to ad address in, in your actual container to make the ghost blog work correctly because it's not hard it's just not something that's built into the template for some reason so we're going to use the template and, and we'll kind of check it out and see how that works i want to say thank you to all of my subscribers and all of my patrons over at patreon seriously you guys make this so worth it for me to do these videos every week i really truly enjoy it and i just can't say thank you enough if you're enjoying these videos subscribe let YouTube know that I'm doing a good job by subscribing to the channel, plus you'll get notified when I have new videos coming out. And finally, if you're enjoying what I'm doing, give it a like, just click on that thumbs up, and that way YouTube knows that you like it, and they'll pass it along to other people that might enjoy my content as well. I really appreciate it. Thank you again. Let's get started. So I'm going to go over to my Portainer install here on my local system here in my home. And I'm just going to go to the templates. And inside of the app templates, you can, of course, just search. But we can just kind of scroll down through here, and you can check out everything that they've got to offer. And as you go down through here, um, you'll eventually come upon the Ghost option. Once you get to Ghost, you can just click on that guy. And it's going to take you into the template itself. And this is so that you can get ready to get started setting everything up. So first of all, what do you want to name this particular install? We can name it whatever we want, but we'll just call it Ghost. It's you know easy enough to, to remember that. The network is going to be a bridge. That's probably fine. We don't want to use the host. Um, we don't want to use the, any of these networks that are down here, so we're just going to let it use the bridge network. Uh, enable access control. Okay, sure, that's administrator level. Uh, deploy the container. So this is really kind of all of the options that we get kind of out of the gate, but that's okay because this is what we want to do. Um, there are some advanced options that we can set here if we want to out of the gate. And a couple of things that I need to set are some ports. So um, basically the host, uh, you know, here is, is kind of what we need to check. And my host, I already have port 80 taken by Nginx Proxy Manager, so we don't want to use that port. So I'm just going to set this on a port that I'm pretty sure I'm not using, which is going to be 9401. And the container side, I'm not going to mess with. This is the this is the port that it says that we should be using for the ghost blog, and it has everything set already. Um, so we just want to kind of leave that alone. And then, uh, you know, map additional volumes. If you need additional volumes, I'm not going to do that. This is your content volume, which is fine. Uh, the container is var slash lib slash content. Um, we could actually add, you know, a volume mount. So we could say volume. And we could set this to be something on our local machine if we want to. Um, so you can kind of pick these different volume locations. This is all stuff that you need to set up. So for now, I'm just going to leave it on auto. That's fine. And then host file entries. Again, don't have any of those. Labels, don't need to put any labels. And then host name. Uh, so it says leave empty for the Docker default. We can just call this, you know... Um, so this is going to be running on my routemehome.org website, so we'll just call this blog.routemehome.org. And now we're going to go ahead and deploy the container. And of course this starts spinning, and it takes a little bit of time to pull down all the images and do everything that needs to do, but it should give you a, a message once it's ready and take you over to the page where it's set up. Alright, that didn't take very long at all, so there it is. So if we go look, we have Ghost running now, and we can actually click in here and see what's going on inside the container as far as the logs go. And it's going to tell you that everything looks like it's running and it says booted in 9.986 seconds, which is pretty dang fast. So we'll actually try to hit the IP address. So that's 192.168.7.125 is my server, and we set 9401. 
and it comes up and you're probably thinking wow okay great that came up no problem super um, and, and it is pretty super uh, so if I go to author you're gonna get this so you notice suddenly I get this unable to connect because it changed it to localhost and this is the problem that we run into and it changes it to a different port and everything like that so inside of ghost there's a setting that says hey I need to go to this particular uh, address and you need to go and change that in order to get ghost to to work correctly but you can't get to the settings and things like that a lot of times because you run into this problem where if you try to load anything that would be the settings um, it won't work so if we don't just go straight to the IP address but we say slash ghost it'll go and it'll let us into the settings here and it's gonna tell us you know create your account so we'll go in and we'll say you know site title so this is uh, my blog you can kind of name this whatever you want put in your name email address and a password that is strong And then you can say invite staff and users if you want to. There's really nobody for me to invite. So just click on the I'll do this later. And you see again, we come to this page that says it can't connect. Um, so it's trying to go to the site on that page, but you have options down here and you have settings and things like that. So we want to go into the general settings. So title and description, site, time zone. So these are all things that you can change. And as you keep going down, you're going to see all the different settings that you have, but there's nowhere to actually set the URL for your site. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to go back into Portainer. We're going to open up our actual container here. So we're going to go into containers. We're going to go into ghost and we're going to click on this little, uh, we're going to stop the container. So we'll click on stop and then we're going to hit on edit. We're going to leave all this stuff pretty much alone. Uh, we don't need to touch any of the stuff that we already did but down here as you move down to the bottom there's going to be this env tab we want to go to env and we're going to add an environment variable so we're going to click on this little plus button right here and you'll see you get a blank a blank row down here we're going to type in url all in lowercase and then over here we're going to put in the url that we want it to have so we're going to put in http uh, http colon slash slash blog.routemehome.org so once we type this in we need to go set up our stuff on nginx proxy manager but first we need to um, just tab out of this field to make sure that it gets taken and then we're just going to say you know deploy the container and it's are you sure so we're going to say yep replace the one that's there and we'll let it do its thing and it's going to tell us okay i did it you know i should be back up and running so now we're going to jump over to our nginx proxy manager and we're going to add a new host so we're going to click on hosts add a new host and again for routemehome.org i have a wildcard entry set up so it's it's an asterisk that just anything i type in dot routemehome.org tries to come to my home server and then nginx proxy manager handles that traffic for me if you don't know how to set that up i'll link to a video uh, in the show notes where i talk about how i've set that up in the past um, I'll link to videos on how to install Nginx Proxy Manager, and I'll link to a video on how to install Portainer, so you can follow along and do this yourself, because Portainer is a really, a really great tool. Um, highly recommend it if you're running Docker containers and things like that, um, to visualize your Docker containers in, in and of itself. So what we want to do inside of Nginx Proxy Manager is we're going to type in the name of the site that we just gave. And then in this, in this screen, you need to either hit Tab or hit Enter so that it actually turns what you typed into a little chip looking thing here with that little kind of background on it and then we're going to leave HTTP and we're going to give the uh, container uh, address here I'm going to put in the port number that I gave it and then right here I'm just going to put in the actual docker zero container address which is 172.17.0.1 if you're not sure what this address is you can go into portainer you can click on ghost and then you can scroll down and you can grab this gateway address so right here is 172.17.0.1 um, and you can see what that is and you can also do this through the command line if you need to but for now we're going to use pertainer for everything that we're doing and we're going to say save 
And then we're going to go here and click on the blog.routemehome.org. And you'll see we get the actual ghost web page that we're expecting. And it's got a URL. So now if I go and I click on this and I just hit slash ghost, this will take me to the login page. And I need to use my username and credentials or my email address and my credentials that I created before. And now you see I actually get something here whenever I come up to the main page. So down here I can go to my general settings again and I can check out all of my settings and everything appears to be working the way that you would expect. Now, I haven't secured it yet, so it's just HTTP. So if I wanna secure it, I can come back into Nginx Proxy Manager now that everything is working. I can click on the little three dots here for that entry I made and I can click edit. I can jump over to SSL and I can drop this down and I can say request new SSL certificate. I'm gonna say force SSL. I don't want my users going to the non SSL site. And then I'm gonna make sure it's got my email address, which it does. I'm gonna say I accept, I'm gonna to agree to the terms of service for Let's Encrypt and I'm gonna hit save. Let's Encrypt's gonna challenge this site to make sure that it can reach it on port 80, which means I'm the owner and then it's gonna give it the actual credentials that it needs. So now, if we close down the window that we had open um, here, and this one, and we go back into here, we can click on this, and it's gonna give us the secured site with a Let's Encrypt certificate, so there's no warning about you're trying to get to this page that's, that doesn't have a certificate. And now you can start actually running your ghost blog. So we can go, you know, slash ghost to get to the admin panel. And again, because now it's secured, it wants you to log back in one more time. And let me just put in the right password. And we're set. So now you can start creating posts, you can do drafts, you can do scheduled posts, you can do all kinds of things on your ghost blog. But on top of that, you can go to design and you can pick different templates that you want to use for ghost blog. You can set all kinds of different things here. You can kind of create your static pages that create your menu at the top. You can change the look of it. You can download other themes. I mean, you can just do so much stuff with Ghost Blog, really. It's a really tremendous tool. Um, it's a great, great uh, blogging application as well. Um, you know, the bare minimum stuff that you need to know is when you want to create a post, you hit the plus and you put in a title. So my first blog post. And then you come down here and you see the little plus. If you click on this, it gives you a lot of options about different things that you can actually do inside of the software. So you can link to videos, you can add photos, you can do things, you can link to Twitter, you can link to Vimeo, I mean just all kinds of stuff that you can do right there. But then you can also just start typing. Um, so if we just do escape, I think, maybe not. Uh, let's go back, let's just say we're gonna do markdown, maybe. There we go, okay. So if you don't know markdown language, don't sweat it too much, but you can learn it, but it's pretty basically, uh, pretty basic. Uh, if you wanna use um, headers, so if you wanna create a title section, just do a pound, and when you hit space, it's gonna make the font bigger. So my first title, and then I can say, this is my blog, thanks for checking it out. And of course, you wanna spell things correctly and once you get to the to that point you can hit enter and you say okay now i want a kind of a subtitle so just pound pound and subtitle this is my sub title section and let's just say you wanted to create a link on one of these so if you highlight the text you'll get this little hover where you can do bold italics and you can change this to headers so let's just say that i was like oh i want this to actually be a header I can start jumping it to header section size. Um, if you wanna make it a quote, you can do that, and this is what it looks like as a quote. Uh, if you wanna create a link, it'll let you type in the link. So, and when you finish typing in the link, you want to hit enter. And basically that creates your link. So now whenever somebody's looking, you can hover it and see what your link is. You can edit the link, you can do all kinds of stuff. But when somebody's reading your blog, they can click on it and it'll take them to the site that you link to. Um, so there's a lot of really cool stuff here. Uh, and then of course you've got, you've got the ability to create a snippet out of the text that you're highlighting. So you can do code formatting, you can do all kinds of things. So Markdown is really great. 
Um, if you don't know Markdown, there's all kinds of websites out there where you can look up Markdown and basically it makes it really easy and really fast to kind of create a website and the cool thing about this is as you enter the markdown it adjusts the text so you can actually see what you're creating as you go so it's a WYSIWYG editor with markdown capabilities um, when you're ready there's the publish uh, button over here and you can just either set a schedule or you can just publish it right away and then the little gear lets you set things like different uh, you can set different aspects of the actual blog post so you can set what the URL is going to look like so it kind of adds a, a hash on the end of it and you can pick, uh, you know, publish dates. You can change tags. You can set up just all kinds of stuff about this post, which is pretty great. So, so this is really, in a nutshell, um, you can go back and now you're gonna have a draft that says my first blog post right here, and that means you haven't published it yet. But you can get to the draft and you can come in here and you continue editing or you can do whatever you want. I didn't have to really click anything to save. But if you're ever in here and it starts giving you a warning about, hey, you're about to leave this page and it doesn't look like you saved, you can just use Control S, like Sam, on Windows or Linux and it'll save the page and then you'll see this little thing pop up here. Um, on, on a Mac, you can use Command S, same way. So this, the save shortcut hotkeys basically work here on this as well to save this as a, as a draft um, so you can get back to it and make sure you have your, your document saved. So they have some default stuff, uh, you know, put in here that you can go check out. And again, if you just take away the, the slash ghost part of the URL, you'll go back to your page. And you can see the stuff that they have here for you to check out. And then you can kind of get rid of the, the, the default stuff and you can move on. So this is ghost. Um, it's really pretty easy to set up. But knowing that little trick about getting in here and adding that extra environment variable for URL, that's really what will get you going with the ghost blog. So hopefully that'll be helpful to you guys uh, if you need it. Um, I really hope that it, it helps you out. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, tell your friends about it so they can come along on the journey with us. And I'll talk to you next time.